Calling the meeting order at 2 o'clock. you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance and stand? Salute. Pledge. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Okay. Uh, committee member Pittman? Here. Committee member Reynolds? Here. Committee member DeLong? Here. Committee member Thompson? Here. Chairperson Fowler? Present. Advisory member C? Here. Advisory member Young? Here. Advisor, advisory member Ruther? Advisory member Steindorf. Advisory member Grover. Here via Zoom. And advisory member Wright. Okay, moving forward to regular business. Mr. Item. Chairperson, if we Please. could, could we take these in the exact opposite order in which they're listed? Do two first establish our budget before we talk about spending our budget? Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. What you have before you in item number two is an item that was brought back from the previous meeting is really the purpose of this meeting. We um, have additional information for the panel to consider this this afternoon. Right now, the balance forward for the SBF fund is about, is $1,184,574. You have encumbrances of obligated projects of 718000 and five dollars and seventy six cents. You have other obligations that are agreements that have not yet uh, been signed uh, in an amount of two million or I'm two thousand two hundred and ninety four thousand and seventy three dollars. And then you have your annual expenses that are associated with the SBF. You have your supplies and outside services of ten thousand five hundred dollars, and you have your part time program manager position of fifty one thousand five hundred and eleven dollars for a total of sixty two thousand and eleven dollars. That leaves you after all of that uh, your obligations at the end of the year, if you were to accept the hundred thousand dollars that annually comes from the Department of Water Resources as part of the uh, other agreement. We we'll leave you an ending fund balance at the end of this fiscal year of two hundred and ten thousand four hundred and eighty four dollars and twenty four cents if you accept the hundred thousand dollars if you don't at the end of this fiscal year it would leave you with a hundred and ten thousand four hundred and eighty four dollars and twenty four cents that takes you through June of twenty twenty two June thirty so that is what your uh, budget is outlined as, your obligations. You can meet your obligations this year. You can get through the fiscal year and either end the year with a fund balance of 210000 or end with a fund balance of 110000 depending on if you accept the revenue, uh, if you agree to uh, the terms and conditions of the contract as it currently exists, which we will be talking about at the next SBF meeting. Uh, we have time. There's room within this budget so that we don't have to rush through that project. You can consider that at your next meeting about uh, how to proceed with that particular item. So what we're looking for from you today is direction on what you would like to do. If you accept this budget as it is and wish it implemented, or if there are changes that you would like to see to the budget. The only changes that would be within the purview of what the uh, committee could do today would be to the uh, other budget items, which is listed on page 20, which would be the part-time program manager and your supplies and outside services. All the rest are uh, results of NOFAs that we have obligated ourselves to, whether they're signed agreements or unsigned agreements, there's still obligations that this committee has um, reached with outside agencies or individuals. Thank you. Uh, discussion, comments? Uh, Council Member Pittman. Thanks, sir. Hang on here. Um, in the past, we had the budget for the SBF had a certain quantity assigned to marketing, to um, promotions, 
we've kind of combined it all here together. Um, I don't remember why we did that in the past. I know there's a different process going on now, but can you answer that question? We moved forward with combining everything when our finance department took over um, our budget. Okay. So we did have it broken out more in specifics before that, um, and then it, it kind of guided us in releasing NOFAs based on we only wanted to see project NOFAs or marketing NOFAs. Mm -hmm. We kind of based it on that. Since our funding had dwindled, we went away from budgeting more towards specific things. Gotcha. I appreciate and that. Member Pittman, if you would look on page 20, tourism marketing is listed as an expense, but it is being paid through the Chamber of Commerce is who is handling that part of the tourism and marketing for the SBF. Oh, I appreciate that. I just remember we were, there, was try to, there was an attempt in the past because we had funds in to look at certain quantity to be marketing and another quantity mm -hmm. for the right. Belfas. So, I mean, that's simple enough. I, 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 uh, it's almost like we I wish we had tourism marketing as a category that we plan to spend each year and then go from there. But that's okay. This works. Um, the other question I had is in the signed agreements that we have and the encumbrances, have we gotten any updates as far as um, do they have great confidence in the amount res awarded to them and any potential changes that may or on the on the outside horizon that they've warned us about? I haven't received any requests. Um, quite a few of them you can see are still pending based on getting through either our legal department or getting signatures from the applicants. Um, and why they say they're not signed yet, it also means they're not encumbrances within our finance department is why it doesn't reflect on the main total. Um, I have not received any ideas of needing more funding at this point. Okay. Appreciate this. that because sometimes best laid plans go to hell in a basket yeah. real quick. And <laughs> Quite a few of them. Um, we're looking at possibly needing extensions just like the ones before from the other NOFA, mm -hmm. you know, the Veterans Memorial has taken longer than they've expected. The rotary application is, you know, like, as you know, not right. happening anytime soon. So those kind of things um, will possibly need extensions once those agreements are signed. Gotcha. And the Freeman Trail is moving forward? As far as I know, yes. We have had a little bit of headway on that. I received a invoice from Feather River Parks and Rec last week or the week before, so there has been some movement in that project. Okay, good. Yeah, we can absolutely have updates at the October meeting on all projects if you would like. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, from applicants. Any other comment? I'll ask one more question, Mr. C, if I may. <laughs> Please. Um, can you give me a projected time schedule on the advance contract? Um, so the uh, right now the contract that we were using for um, providing those advances has uh, has ended. So to do a new contract, it'll take about four months from the moment it leaves um, Orville. So once we you know write the mm -hmm. contract scope of work and everything else, which is essentially going to be what's in what was emailed to you right. um, in the previous contract, um, the uh, you know you're talking four months from the point it leaves Orville. Okay. Mr. Pittman, Mr. C did get us that information yeah. earlier this week. It was just we were unable to get it onto the agenda because of the just not enough notification time, but we have received information. Well, I appreciate all the other emails, the past documents and past contracts. There. Right, yeah. The, the last meeting there was a request for that, that yeah. contract. And the reason why there's so many documents is because the contract was originally written in 2006 and then it just was amended you know, year after year after year after year. So those amendments are just a few pages each. Right. Um, there were a few changes that occurred along the way. Um, the, uh, it was Amendment 3 when we actually started those $100,000 year payments. Um, and it was, I think, Amendment 8 where um, I went up to $3 million during the 2017 spillway emergency. There was that uh, deal that was cut with uh, between the department, state water contractors, and the city of Orville. So um, that was when the $3 million came. And then um, following that, there were three other payments of the 100000 Good. So that, and that just gives us, a, if we're going to move forward with this, it gives us some assurance that we'll see something to the reality of this bottom number right so you know what i would need is just you know a letter from the uh, the committee just saying that you would like to to proceed with the funding and um you know it's similar to what's, what's happened in the past and you know then i can take that and then use that gotcha. to, to base our, our contract on thank you 
And actually, I have one other um, comment. I just wanted to make sure everyone understood. So the contract, all this contract is, is the vehicle that allows the city to invoice DWR so then DWR can make the payment. So we just need to have that, that paper trail, and that's, that's what this contract is. Right. Appreciate that. It's called state bureaucracy. Yes. <laughs> and, and that's where when we talk about ending fund balances, what the committee decides, this is that $100,000 difference, whether we're going to have 100000 or 200000 at the end of the fiscal year. Mm -hmm. uh, committee Member Reynolds, please. <clears throat> I, um, uh, looking at this budget, I, I know that we've spent a lot of money here lately, and I, I would like to revisit the uh, coordinator position that maybe we go out and uh, get some prices of what it would cost to have someone come in maybe one day a month instead of constantly uh, funding that position because we're going to be out, out of money here pretty quick. So what I'm hearing, uh, committee member Reynolds, is that you're requesting uh, or requesting uh, conversation from the rest of the committee about whether or not to release an RFP for a consultant to coordinate the program at approximately one day per month yes. due to funding restrictions? Right. I, yes, sir. I think we're approaching that that position a lot quicker than we than we might realize. So we need to do something about it. That's my thoughts. And I'm thinking the same thing. So maybe if we contract out, that might serve the committee better. Any other comments, uh, Thompson? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, quick question for you, Mr. C, is the 100,000 that is, is coming, uh, do you see that it be a a long term if, if the new state water contractors whatever license isn't released by FERC in the next 10 years do you see $100,000 coming every year until that uh, is released or, or is there a uh, an end date to this these funds that have been coming from there, yeah, you are. there is an end date to it. So um, these, um, this funding, these are advances against right. a lump sum payment that was not to be released actually until the um, the license was issued. So that's in the supplemental benefits fund uh, re requirement in the settlement agreement. There's different payments that are um, uh, throughout the agreement. Um, the when you read that agreement, the lump sum payment of four million one hundred thirty five thousand dollars that was to be given to the SBF upon um, license issuance and DWR <laughs> accepting it. Those advances have been against that uh, that fund. So that fund has, of, of what's left of that, there's $135,000 left of that lump sum payment. So theoretically, if um, the committee decided to accept you know, another advance, that would be $100,000, then there would be $35,000 left after that. You know, presumably, if you take that $35,000, then uh, there would be nothing left. And then there would be no more payments until the new license is issued, and that would trigger another payment um, requirement in the license, which is for a million dollars a year for um, a 50-year license term. Thank you. I actually knew the answer to that. I just want to make sure that everybody was, was clear on that, that, that we potentially have $100,000 coming, but that's pretty much... It's yeah, 135. You know, right. over you know two years. But and I'm glad you, I was going to mention that just before a vote is made on this. Um, one other thing I wanted to uh, to point out was um, that the uh, that 135,000. If you don't take it now, it will then occur when the new license is issued. Whenever that happens, then it would just you know the the, the committee would get the money then. So it's not that you would lose out on the money; just it would be at that later time. So really, the question is, do you want to ha you know get another advance against that uh, that lump sum payment? Right. I, I understand. Actually, again, I'm just wanting there to be clarification for those that are in the room and maybe watching online. So I, I absolutely agree. You know, it's it's been how long, Mr. Pittman? Have we been in this process waiting for the license to be signed? We signed the settlement agreement in March of 2006, if I recall right. So it's it's been a little while. Mm -hmm. That brings in my is that 15 years now? Pretty close to that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't, I, 
there was I was hopeful when I especially when I first came on the SPF I was I had a you know really hopeful that uh this was going to come the energy what was the what we we're waiting on the uh, biological the hmm. environmental study or something that had been done it took 10 years NOAA so. fisheries right yes it was the biological opinion for salmon right. steelhead and sturgeon in the river so that was done and so I think myself and many thought that uh that was what we're waiting on so let's move this thing forward and then, and here we are so anyway with that said who knows how long we're going to be looking at this and just kind of waiting and so uh with that said and and uh the remainder i i agree concur with with both uh my committee members in regards to um just moving this to a consultant as needed basis Can we, committee member Pittman. yeah thank you um when you were talking about the contracts there was at the top of those contracts of the past there was an eight million dollar figure and is that the amount that we're going against? I can explain that. Okay. I, I, I thought I might get this question, so actually I, I yeah. grabbed that, uh, that detail. So um, the uh, contract that, um, how can I describe this uh, simply? The, the, the uh, contract that um, was uh, arrived at in 2006, that was the original contract, the one that was, was emailed to you before the amendments or anything else. It envisioned $8 million. The way that that came about was it um, included the one million nine hundred thirty-five thousand dollar payment. That was one of the lump sum payments. Right. It included the four million one hundred thirty-five thousand dollar lump sum payment, and it also included two payments into the new license. Those million dollar payments. Okay. So that's where the additional two million. If you add everything up, that's where the additional two okay. million came from. Because uh, it was figured that you know, at that time we thought the new license was about to be issued. I mean, it, there was there was a lot of things going on. The, the biological opinion from NIMS. Um, was was we you know they had issued a draft of it. We were um, thought we were very close. Of course, it took till 2016 for them to ultimately finish it. But um, the uh, so that that was the reason why we just wanted to have one contract that covered you know all these right. payments and right. that first two years um, into the new license. So I would you know as as we get closer to the, the new license, we'll make sure we have a contract in place so that way we'll be able to make the payments you know when when sure. they need to come in. So. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's not, you know, something we do in the next year, whenever we get close to the new license, we'll make sure we work with the city to get, a, you know, a contract ready to go so we'll be able to make the, the payments that we need to make on time. I appreciate that. Thank you. Helps to explain it because I was, I had memory of it, but I, I appreciate listening to it. That's, when you look at the contracts, you see that $8 million figure. And right. Then you got to back up from there. Right. We had to, you know, we had to research, you know, where did that eight, eight is eight million seventy thousand? That was a number like that. Come right. Up, and that, that's what it was. So. Thank you. Okay, we have somebody from the public who'd like to speak. If you step forward, please. I'm Tasha Levinson, res Orville resident. Um, just to be clear, this was not a contract. This was a settlement agreement because DWR has so badly mismanaged the dam in the 20 years before then that there had to be a settlement agreement for them to even be permitted to continue to have a license to operate it. These extensions that you've talked about year after year after year have been one-year extensions where we have continued to accept DWR's management of this dam, notwithstanding that they tried to kill us in 2017. I just want to be clear so that you guys recognize what you're doing. You can put pressure on them for safety and a few other things that has not been done, and I don't know why you don't bother to do it. That would be a good thing to do. They have interest-free ability to keep this license going while we have lost out in this 14 years because that money was set back there in 2006 and none of it has increased or had interest or anything to do with the delays to give us any payback for that just to be aware of it thank you thank you any other comments In adding to the discussion about the uh, cost for consultants or whatever contracts you're talking about, I would like to see at least the proposal for a contractor to do that, but knowing the quantity of work is required because I don't know if it's one day a month or if it's three days a month or two days a week or whatever. So I think staff could probably assemble the time requirements for managing these other uh, encumbrances and grants that are out there because I do know there's a fair amount of paperwork so it would be nice to see that as part of the project that 
how much actual time is required to maintain and manage these things. Uh, these other these uh, commitments that we already have, we call them encumbrances, and then what you know agreements are going to come forward. So um, that's about the only way we can actually hire a contractor because if we just pick a certain date and time, I'm not sure how we know what that is. So. Um, That's all I have. Do you have any comments, uh, Mr. LeGround or Jordan, about that statement? No, I, I believe what we'll do is we'll put together a request for proposal. We'll work with staff to determine a reasonable amount of time per month to do that, and then we will release that, and we will bring you back, mm -hmm. um, not an agreement, but a potential agreement with all of the parameters in it of what we uh, released and what the cost for that would be each month. And then the committee will make the decision whether to commit themselves to that or not. Okay. okay, thank you. All right, moving to item number one. Mr. Chairman, if we could, um, uh, on this particular item, I realize that the agenda does not show that it is a, it shows provide staff direction, but we need you to accept the budget and to um, vote on the budget if you accept this and also give uh, Part of that motion should include re uh, releasing an RFP for a uh, I will entertain consultant. a motion. I'll make a motion that we accept the budget for 2021-2022 uh, with a stipulation of uh, issuing an RFP for a consultant. Is there a second? Does that include the acceptance of the current budget with the part-time program manager for 51511, or is that... Uh, on pause and see what the RFP comes back with. I would think that that would be. It, uh, when are we funded till? We're funded through June of 2030. I'm sorry, uh, June 30 of 2022. <laughs> I was like, I mean, wow, yeah, boy, really? Jumped way ahead there. Yeah. We're gonna stretch that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got the 30 in the wrong spot. Sorry. <laughs> so we're we're actually fine to leave that in place right now to find. I, out. I believe so. If you adopt this budget, then uh, as it exists right now, and then at uh, in the October meeting, you make the decision to go to a consultant. We'll adjust the budget at that time and back that number out, and uh, essentially use those dollars for a consultant. Okay, that was my understanding. Thank you. Great. I'll second. Any other discussion? Mm -mm. Call to vote, please. Motion carries with five yeses and zero noes. Is there any other agenda to discuss? Yes, sir. Uh, Item number one, uh, we're kind of going in the Sorry. reverse order, is a request from the Oroville Chamber of Commerce for the 2021 funding. It was for $60,000 for um, um, tourism and marketing. Uh, the chamber representative was here at the last meeting. The uh, committee decided not to take action on that until they had a better opportunity to look more closely at the budget and see what dollars were available in the budget. Now that the committee has accepted the budget and adopted the budget, um, like I said, we have that $100,000 variable in there, but at the end of the year, without uh, the expense of the chamber, you would have a balance of $110,484. So if you do uh, award these dollars for that, that would leave you with a balance of approximately $50,484 uh, in there, unless, with the caveat, you accept the $100,000 uh, as part of the DWR settlement, that would leave you with $150,000. And so we have that $100,000 swing you just need to keep in mind, which I know convolutes the issue and confuses everything, but I just want to make sure you keep that in mind. Can me Committee Member Thompson. Can you refresh my memory, uh, Mr. Legrone, in regards to every year we have to come back? I think is it uh, is it a it was a motion of the city council actually to take away the authority of the mayor to just go ahead and take care of the renewal of the city being the fiduciary handler, right? That's so this this whole idea of whether or not we're going to receive the funds. Was the, is that part of that whole process of removing that, the mayor from that authority? That became an issue at the city council, not at the SBF uh, level. The SBF uh, chair could accept those funds, accept funding, uh, not expend funding. The 
mayor because of the action of the council and i believe it was in 2018 when this occurred um, the mayor cannot accept those funds it takes uh, action of the body to accept those funds great i ought to be clear that it wasn't this mayor it was not this mayor nor this council <laughs> well i was there yes well it was part of this council, this council? <laughs> <laughs> i voted against that but uh, mr chair i had a comment um the uh, I just want to make it clear as far as the DWR um, the hundred thousand that the the default is that the, the hundred thousand will come when the new license is issued. If you request to have that funding early, that's what we need to know. So we need to get that request. Also make sure everyone understands that. So um, the uh, you know we'll need to get a you know letter for, like we have in the past of making the request for the funding. But you know the the default will be just we'll just follow what's in the settlement agreement, which is to wait until the new license is issued unless we get that request. And you said that it takes about four months to process that after the letter. That's that's a good you know you, you, that's about right. Um, and you know right now that's that's the way things have been going right now just because of, of COVID. You know I should point out um, the uh, what happened to us last year um, was uh, because of the COVID crisis. The governor um, you know we you know we had an impending fiscal crisis, so we actually put a a, a lid on all. Uh, a discretionary spending in the state of California. So only, if, you know, if critical infrastructure like, you know, or the DWR, but if it was something like, you know, the, the SBF, which because it's not a requirement, fell into that category of being discretionary. So, you know, I can't guarantee, I'm not saying anything's going to happen in the, in the coming year, but you never know. These things can uh, can come up. So I just wanted to warn everybody that when I say that, you know, we, we will do it in the future, that's going to be, you know, assuming we don't have some, uh, you know, some constraint placed on us. So that's, you know, just wanted to make sure everyone was aware of that. So I would ask the committee, are we all clear on what Eric C. just said? Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah and once the license is issued, it won't be discretion. I mean, it'll be, it'll be a requirement. Then it would, you know, we wouldn't have any discretion. We would certainly do it then. Uh, committee member Pittman. Well, then I'm, and I'm, I'm just maybe by consensus that we should, in fact, send the letter to start that process if we haven't decided to do that or yet to, from the, from the SBF to, the, to DWR to move that process along. That's my mind as well. Yeah. I don't think that's what's on the agenda. Right? We'll discuss <laughs> no, that after pretty, this agendized item. Right? Right. So you don't need that to be agendized, do you? Yeah. No, but we are on an agenda. Yeah, we item. should okay. we should yeah. stick to yeah, the good. item. Our chamber item. So getting back to the chamber request, any other comments? Yeah, I have a question in the budget we just passed. It 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 lists the chamber's dollar amount twenty eight thousand. What other is amalgamated to that? What I'm sorry, what was the question? Well the chamber's asking for sixty and he on this budget says twenty eight thousand. Yes. What's the other part of that? So the chamber currently has a not ongoing, but each year you um this body has approved a tourism marketing grant for them. So their current agreement ends August 31st, and that's the remaining balance you see on there. Okay. Um, their new budget moving forward that they're requesting the additional 60000 is on page 12. Okay. So, and that would be the annual um, amount that we've given in the past, um, and it's also the amount once license signing is how much goes to the gotcha. chamber for marketing. So for clarity, that 28 we're still holding and we're going to give that to them. Is that what I understand? Yes, that's okay. that's the agreement that ends August 31st. So that's an ongoing encumbrance that they have open right now from the last year that they, I believe, passed an um, extension two meetings ago with this body. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Mm -mm. Are there funds this year that the chamber was not given because they were being uh, Yeah, that's... Is that something else? Is that a different? I believe that was I believe they DWR did. The yeah, point. in their presentation at last meeting, um, Amber, our representative, I believe said that they were um, being withheld funding from DWR. I think the best one to answer that question would be uh, the Amber representative come on up. from Chamber of Commerce. Come on down. Thank you, Amber. 
Yeah. Hi, everyone. So, yeah, our DWR funding was also cut for the same reasons for COVID-19 restrictions. And even when that contract goes through, even though it is a tourism contract, it is not all Oroville encompassing. It's very specific that it is DWR related projects encompassing. So, for example, with this contract, I can promote downtown Oroville events, but I couldn't use DWR funding to promote a specific downtown Oroville event unless it happened to include the river, for example. Gotcha. So what what have you used on behalf of DWR? Like funding so, wise, what have you done in conjunction with DWR? So in conjunction with DWR, so we haven't had a contract for over a year because of the COVID-19 restrictions, but whenever we did have a contract, it was updating the Lake Oroville.net website, which we do still post community updates just in good faith that that contract will get renewed. It is um, going to the International Sportsman's Expo to promote tourism in Oroville, which we do use that as an opportunity to send out also or all Oroville encompassing visitor guides. They also give um, funding for a couple specific community events, which would include Feather Fiesta Days and the Salmon Festival, which is partially on a different note why we're looking for sponsorship for the Salmon Festival, because we did not receive that funding through the contract this year. And then it's just similar to this, where we will do extra blog posts on the lake, the forebay, the river, we'll do videos, we'll do social media posts, email blasts on recreation that involves DWR areas. Thank you. Uh, committee member Thompson. Thank you. Uh, you that's, that's fine, Amber. I don't have any questions for you. Thank you. Um, I would like to say, though, in regards to this, that if uh, if I'm not sure when the last time the chamber actually gave a presentation at city council as to all they do, but as a council member, I would be interested to to see that. I think at one time the council did support the chamber of commerce, and then when times were tight, that got chopped. <clears throat> so, just in light of everything we're deciding here, you know, reducing the, the part-time program manager position, I'm I. Uh, I think the chamber is a very important entity in our town, but this well right here is pretty much going dry. So it's it's my mind that right now we um, that we don't approve that item. Any other commentary? Sure. Yeah, I'd like to say something. Um, I was thinking that as well, that the the city should be involved with funding the chamber, but I'm wondering if that would be deemed a conflict of interest with the CEO. I hope not. He serves on the city council, and I hope that it would not be a conflict of interest. It would not. He would have to just recuse himself from all matters relating the particular issue and um, you know leave the room, things like that. But no, it, it is not. It does not preclude the chamber from obtaining funding from the city. And I might offer or suggest that if the SBF is inclined to partially support this and then reach out to the city for potentially funding you know whatever portion that the SPF uh, cannot I mean because I certainly understand your sentiments and feelings I mean the the well is if it's not dry it's as empty as Lake Orville I couldn't resist Eric Sorry. That, was, that was a good one I, guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did have I wanted to assure Amber that uh, that contract is in process now the you know the, the governor restrictions have been lifted it's just it's taking a while because it's a non-competitive bid contract which is different than what we do with the city of Oroville, which is an interagency agreement. So it just takes longer. We have more justifications and a lot more paperwork we have to go. But it is in Sacramento right now processing. So. Um, if, if you don't, did you have a motion on that? I had zero motion. Zero motion. I, I would uh, entertain a motion that at this time we fund 30,000 of the 60 and then approach the city council and see what we're able to do in that area to bolster up the the um, Chamber of Commerce because I, I think that they really, really provide a invaluable service to the community. And I would hate to lose any any staff over there. We've 
there's a great little team over there and we want to make sure that we at least revisit that but I would make a motion that we fund 30,000 at this time do I have a second Any other discussion? I'll, I'll, I'll make a second, but with this this caveat being that um, I definitely, if the condition of the state of the council is is what it is, twenty four year twenty four twelve months from now twenty twenty four hours um, twelve months from now I will not be I personally won't be in good conscience funding this because again the, this well is uh, until the contract license is signed this well is pretty much running dry so so I make a second or yeah a second on the motion any other discussion call to vote please uh, actually under the question for the contract on page 10 you might there's a just a typo error the current SBF care there's chairperson typos on okay. this, yes Motion carries with five yeses and zero noes. Okay, thank you, committee. Any other agenda items or discussion? No, sir. No, sir, no, sir that's the end of the agenda. We're, please, go ahead. Did we make a decision on the 100,000, whether to receive that now or later? No, that's not an agendized item. Okay, well, it's part, kind of part of the second one. As far as the budget, because it was on there as potential revenue, so in that way, it's kind of on the. I, th the, I think the I have a, a clear sentiment of what the committee would like from that. You have consensus, I understand. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Is there anything else? Harry, not. We'll I, I have one more question, Mr. C. Okay. Um, you mentioned the update on the ramp improvements and whatnot, and it sparked a, a memory of mine when. I think it was in 2008 when they did the Bidwell ramp There's extension, no and we were up there and we had a ribbon cutting ceremony where we went the oh, first low, low. And I remember that it was either the director or the assistant director mentioned that any further extensions would happen as soon as the water level went lower. Is that still in place, or? Well, we did do another extension in 2015 when we had that low water period. Okay. And right now we are um, in the process of. Uh, um, extending the ramp at Lofer Point, and so that we're going to take that one down. Okay. So, in fact, that contract's going through um, this week. I think it's, it's going to get okay. its final signature. So we'll be going out to bid very well. Actually, we're not going out to bid. We're, we'll be getting a contractor selected very soon. I just remembered being up there for the ribbon cutting for that first low water extension at Bidwell, and the whoever was the director at the time mentioned that we're going to continue to take this down as the water level goes down, and had committed to it. That's just a memory that I had. And I didn't get it in signed writing, but I did. <laughs> It yeah, was that, something that probably that was been helpful, um, but yeah. I, I, I so I will say this: um, when the new license is issued in the in the new settlement right. recreation management plan, we do have a provision in there to extend bid well down. So uh, we okay. will be doing that one. Okay. Um, you know, Lofer Point was a new ramp that kind of came out of the, the spillways right. Um, right. emergency, but uh, just with the um, construction that's going on there um, and the topography and everything else, we, we identified that as a place we could do an extension, and so gotcha. we're, we're planning to extend that down. Thank you. So, um, yeah, and that uh, that project will start in October, um, November, and be going through this uh, fall into the winter. Committee Member Thompson. Thank you. Also, a question for Mr. C. Wanted to follow up to see if you happened to talk to your higher-ups on from our <laughs> last meeting. I did. Um, so uh, they, you know... The response is, um, you know, what the projects we have going on right now, th this is our, um, you know, what we're going to be doing right now. So we have the, the current recreation projects, you know, dating back to the spillways emergency, right. which we're still in the process of, uh, of completing. Uh, when that's done, um, we, we keep saying 30, you know, plus million. We started out with, with the estimate was 30 million. It was 30 plus. It's quite a bit more than that now. So uh, we're, we're definitely in, in the mid 30s on that, uh, that whole um, package of projects. So um, we also are implementing our current recreation plan which dates back to 1994. We know it's outdated. That's why we wrote a new one in the settlement agreement. And so when the settlement agreement is issued, that will become our new recreation plan and we'll go forward with a bunch of new um, projects and, and programs when that, uh, when that um, license is issued and it triggers that, that, that um, recreation management plan. So 
you know, what, what you see right now, the recreation management plan we're implementing is, is what you get until the new license is issued. So basically the, they said no. Uh, well, as far as, you know, I know there's a lot of things talked about the last meeting, bridges and, you know, all these sorts of things. If it's in our recreation plan, we will, we will um, maintain it. If it's, you know, part of this recreation package, but uh, additional uh, new items, the answer is no right now. Okay, additional new items, items answer is no. And the uh, second question I have, just in regards to the, um, I really would like some trails on along that river, but uh, anyway, I appreciate if you'd ask again, Maybe this council can write a letter mm -hmm. that would that would ask yeah. that that would be included, mm -hmm. you know, with uh, sure. the plan. I would say it's a letter of reasonable asking for emphasis along the yeah. trail river trails is yeah. certainly within our purview. Yeah. Sure, and you know, I, just so everyone understands the, um, you know, as far as our um, our FERC requirements, you know, they are specific to the FERC project boundary, right? Which is not the, the area along the river. That in you know in the settlement agreement that was that was recognized and so the SBF you know that is the right. jurisdiction of this yeah. committee and that was the reason and, why we have these yeah. these payments to the SBF yeah. to allow for there to be you know yeah. some of the benefits of Lake Orville to be actually extend outside of FERC jurisdiction and go in that area so I just wanted to point that out and, and the, the Feather River conceptual plan that was uh, developed by this committee you know identifies a bunch of projects along the Feather River corridor for yeah. you know for future funding. Second, second question so if we could write that letter that'd be that'd be great. I would love to have that, and I'd love to sign it to ask. Sure, we'll that certainly you know entertain you know what what you guys. No want point. To send us in, there, no harm in asking, especially officially from this council. Um, the second question I had, just if you could educate me in regarding the, uh, and maybe those that are also interested, are, are lake levels as everybody knows, and everybody across the nation is getting photos of our of our lake being a historic lows and all that. Is there to me, before it was where it was, it, I would drive through by the fish hatchery across the dam or the bridge, and I would notice just, the, to me, in my, in my layman's opinion, a massive amount of water that's been released all throughout the summer. Would you say that the amount of water that's been released throughout the summer was, was average or below average or above average? And I'm sure you have stats that could say specifically exactly where that was because it seemed to me like it was the banks were were, were were flowing as the water was just pouring out of the lake yeah so the um the minimum flow requirement for the low flow channel which is what you're talking about you know the, the river right. right here through town is uh, 600 cubic feet per second so um but that doesn't reflect all of the water that goes down the feather river because there's a certain amount of water that comes out of the after bay outlet right you know seven the miles downstream pool and all that right? yeah well, not the diversion pool, the after bay. Right. So you'll have water release from the after bay combines with what's going on the low flow right. channel. That's what actually forms the, the flow of water that uh, goes down the, the Feather River, down the Sacramento River and points right. south. So the water that you were seeing um, going down the low flow channel, there's times where for a variety of reasons, sometimes operational reasons, sometimes temperature reasons, we'll swap some of the flow that would normally be coming out of the after bay outlet and we'll put it down the low flow channel. So... Ultimately, it's the same amount of total water from, from Lake Orville going down the Feather River. It's just it's not being diverted out to the after bay and then going back to the Feather River. So what you were seeing was, was some of that water. So for, for some operational reasons, we, we, were, um, we had that, that flow split. Um, there are times where um, for us to meet temperature requirements in the low flow channel, which is habitat for um, salmon and steelhead, in order for us to meet those temperatures, we need to release more water to push that cold water down to um, down to this location in the low flow channel, which is where our temperature compliance point is. So sometimes we'll release more water just to get it uh, get it down there faster, and so um, that can be a reason. If we have uh, an issue like we're doing work out in the after bay or something like that, we might want to swap some of that water down the low flow channel. So what you saw this year, you're right, it was a little bit higher than um, traditionally um, we um, have released. For the period of time when Thermalito Power Plant was um, out of commission because of uh, you know fire we had back in 2012, there were many years where during the summertime we had more water down the low flow channel, which was different than the previous several decades. So it just you know kind of depends on the um, conditions that we have operationally. So we weren't releasing any additional water out of Lake Oroville. It's just that what you saw in the section of the river through town was getting some more of the water that would normally have gone through the after bay and then out to the river. I understand. So the amount of water coming out of the dam total was average this year or oh below average well below average so the um you know so so the water coming out of orville dam goes basically to either the low flow channel right here in town right it gets diverted down the power canal 
over to the forebay, and then from the forebay it goes to the afterbay. From the afterbay then it distributes out to the local agriculture, what we call the Feather River Service Area. That's the Western Canal Water District, the um, you know, Richville Water District, the Sutter Butte Canal, so those big canals around the afterbay. And so water goes out to them, and then what doesn't go out to them then goes through the afterbay outlet back out to the Feather River, and then that's what goes downstream. So the um, rice farmers this year, you know, the Feather River service area got a 50% uh, cut in their allocation because of the, you know, the drought conditions. So there's less water that was going to be going out to them, um, and we've also had lower water fl flows in the uh, Feather River. They've been uh, basically at minimum flows throughout the summer. Some of the lowest flows I've seen, you know, because in, in a wet year, we could have 17,000 cubic feet per second going down the Feather River. This year, I think it's been at, you know, 2,200, 2,500, something like that. So it's, it's been very low flows down the, down the Feather River. Thank you for the explanation. I have a question, Mr. Legrone. Um, the letter I think I'm hearing that uh, Committee Member Thompson wants to have written on behalf of the SBF, would it be easier if each member of this committee was to submit their own letter and then there was a summary? I think if the committee members so chose, they could submit their thoughts via email to uh, Ms. Daly and then she could compile a letter and we could bring it to exactly. the next meeting for the uh, um, committee to adopt and to send okay. out. Is that agreeable to the committee? Sure. sure. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Is there any other items of discussion? No, sir. Hearing none, we'll adjourn the meeting at 2.46. Sunday. Yeah, it does say 24th Sunday. That's the opening weekend of that. 27th? 27th. <laughs> I, I probably won't be here.